Hello everyone, my name is Nikita, welcome to the Cryptos channel and today we're going to have a look at the history of XRP right from the start in 2004 until the present day. We're going to have a look at its highs and lows, at the challenges it passed through and at the future plans. <laughs> It all started with Ryan Fugger who got the idea of creating Ripple Pay back in 2004 and the initial plan was to build up a payment system P2P without any intermediates or banks. In 2005 the project launched and it did pretty well but the thing is back then it was not a blockchain it was just a payment system more like PayPal. The key difference was just that Ripple was aiming to serving business clients so big corporations to use their payment system and again they did pretty well and had lots of partners in the coming years. This was the case until the year 2011 when Arthur Britt and David Schwarz started on working on the idea of transferring their payment system on blockchain. In the same year, the company was joined by Jet McCallop and he became the new CTO and we're going to talk about him a little bit later, but he's the one who created the exchange Empty Gox. The exchange isn't there around anymore because he sold it right before getting into Ripple, but the thing is, right after he sold it, the uh, exchange went bankrupt and until the present day, they owe their clients about 80,000 Bitcoin. Jet and Ryan started working on a cryptocurrency for Ripple named XRP and they started started a corporation called OpenCoin, which they continued their research and their work with. In 2012, Ripple or OpenCoin at that time had their first investment round, where Jesse Paul, the future founder of the exchange Kraken and Roger Ware, funded the project with $200,000, claiming they wanted to invest in it before the founders recognized what they've built. In the beginning of the year 2030, the project was ready to go live, and this is when Ripple XRP was born. They minted 100 billion tokens of XRP and they all were claimed by OpenCoin for further distribution and sales. The team created a blockchain for P2P payments without intermediates and the blockchain was one of the most technologically advanced at the time and even until today's date. The blockchain scalability allowed it to pass around 1000 transactions per second. They happened almost instantaneously and they were very very cheap as they are today and this is hundreds of times faster and more transactions than on the blockchain of Bitcoin or Ethereum. Thus this came with the cost of poor decentralization because all the nodes or the validators that are running on XRP, they either belong to XRP itself or to their close partners. And this is a permission blockchain. That means you can't open your own node and validate for XRP without their permission. In September 2013, OpenCoin changed their name to Ripple Labs and at the same time they had another investment round with investors like Google Ventures, Address and Horowitz or IDG Capital for another one and a half million dollars. In the beginning of the year 2014, Jet McCallop left the company and started his own project named XLM and the official version is that they didn't comply in the directions they want to move their project further and the unofficial version is that Ripple had to create a project for the anti-monopoly service service, which XLM basically is for XRP. When leaving, Jet received a compensation from Ripple, namely 12% of the total Ripple XRP supply in their tokens. And at this time, in the year 2014, this was about $45 million. He was obligated to sell parts of his XRP tokens every month following strict rules so that a single person does not have too much of the XRP supply. By today's date, he's almost sold all of his XRP tokens, but it's still not clear how many tokens he has left in his wallet or in his wallets. And the thing is, in the last six months of selling the XRP tokens, he made clear profits of about two and a half billion dollars. The important thing is that Jet McCallop is selling his XRP not on the OTC market, but rather at the market prices at the exchanges. So the good thing is, once his XRP supplies are drained, there won't be a negative impact on the price anymore. At least there will be one negative impact less. Next, also in the year 2014, Ripple started partnering with banks. Their first partner was the German Fighter Bank, and then they partnered with Cross River and CBW. Shortly after this, Ripple has also partnered with the Earthport payment system. And this was actually the time when the first commercial use of uh, XRP transfers has happened. In the same time, the SEC has sued Ripple and charged them with $700,000 fine because they were selling unregistered tokens as they have have said and they also forced them to partner with FinCEN so they can help withstand illicit money movements and illicit financial financial activities but this had no other negative impact on the company itself in 2016 Ripple partners with the cross-border money transfer giant Western Union and in the same year they partner with SBI holdings and together they create a corporation called SBI Ripple Asia which aims for providing 
uh, financial services and cross-border payments to different banks. 60% of the corporation's shares were allocated to the SBI Holdings Group and 40% were received by Ripple. And furthermore, SBI Holdings has uh, acquired 10.5% of all Ripple XRP supply. In 2017, Ripple opens an office in Mumbai and in Singapore. And as a side note, the price of the XRP token at this time was $0.006, so basically half a cent. But already in January 2018, Ripple has seen his all-time high, which we haven't over hide yet. And the price went from these $0.006 to $3.31 within a year and that's an annual growth by 51,000%. Such a price movement was based on great news about Ripple's partnerships and also at this time the whole crypto market as a whole was also growing. This was the time when Bitcoin has reached $20,000 almost. And also in this time in the year 2018 Ripple has partnered with the National Bank of Saudi Arabia. A few weeks later the crypto markets have crashed and this was the time where Ripple dropped from $20,000 almost to just a few K. And Ripple XRP was no exceptions. Its coin price has also dropped to about 30 Cents. In the following two years, Ripple XRP was traded in the channel uh, with a price movement from about 15 cents to 50 cents back and forth. Regardless of the big price drop, XRP continued working and uh, developing like as if nothing happened. This was a great time for new partnerships because XRP acquired different partners like for example commercial banks, financial institutions and really big funds like the Vanguard Fund. In the end of 2020, the SEC again sued Ripple, but this time they did not have any clear argument or any argument whatsoever for doing so. The whole argument was based on the thing that Sex said that XRP is not a cryptocurrency or is not a currency at all, it is a security. And because it's a security, they're not allowed to sell their XRP anymore and were not allowed in the first place. The thing is, the SEC definitely knew about what XRP is doing for at least six years, well, because they had a lawsuit before with the company and uh, they didn't say anything for the past six years. And then all of a sudden, they're claiming that XRP does illicit things. And this was nothing but FUD, actually. Right after the news with the lawsuit with SEC and Ripple XRP, the XRP price has dropped to a low of about 20 cents, having reached about 70 cents a few weeks before this. But the good thing is, the market has quickly realized that all these news with uh, the lawsuit were just FUD news and that the accusations were completely groundless. And thus, the price for XRP moved very quickly from 20 cents from this low to $1.80 to prices we haven't seen in years, despite the continuing and ongoing lawsuit with the SEC until the today's day. Of course, the price has dropped from back then following the bearish price movement of the markets from May 2021. But the good thing is the lawsuit with the SEC barely influences the price of XRP anymore. And that's of course great. If Ripple XRP loses the lawsuit with the SEC, then they will basically get fined and nothing pretty bad will happen. But if they do win the lawsuit with the SEC, then this will be like really awesome great news for the price movements towards the top. Despite the ongoing problems and challenges Ripple XRP is facing, which we've talked about right now, it's growing and getting new partnerships and expanding at the rate we've never seen before. Like for example, right now they're working on a new technology called Federal Sidechains. This technology will aid different, as it said, sidechains to the mainnet of Ripple XRP and these sidechains will support uh, the XRP token and also uh, the functionality of smart contracts, so basically DeFi and so uh, DEXs and all the other stuff that comes with it. This of course means that Ripple XRP is evolving and constantly getting better and meeting the new market conditions which uh, every project basically is forced to meet right now. And these are awesome news and we'll see in the future how Ripple XRP does. And that's actually it for the video. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you've got some useful infos about XRP from here. And thank you a lot for watching. See you in the next video.